This is Math 142. We're going to look at Section 7.5, and this is going to be solving trig equations. This is going to bring together a lot of our work. So we've talked about, like, all these relationships. We've talked about the unit circle. This is going to pull a lot of things together for us. I want to start with reminding you something about um, each of these functions. So sine of theta... Uh, you know, if I take sine of something, that's basically giving me the height of that angle. Notice that, like, that is the same as, as this. So sine of theta is the same as sine of theta plus 2 pi times k, where k is an integer. And by an integer, we mean, like, um, you know, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and going forever in both directions. So no, no fractional part, just whole, what are, what are whole numbers, but also negative versions of whole numbers. And, you know, if you think about this, hopefully that makes sense. 2 pi, that's the period, right? The regular period of sine is 2 pi. That's how long it takes to repeat itself. So let's say k is 1. Sine of theta is the same as sine of the angle plus 2 pi, like a full rotation of the other angle. In other words, say I'm here. If I add 2 pi to it, I'm back here again. So... Um, this is the same. You could also say 360 K if you're in degrees. Your book might write it like this, and I might I might go back and forth between the representations 2 K pi. Um, I prefer this because it just shows like a period times some counting. And if it's negative, it's like rotating in that direction of full rotation. So we have the same relationship for cosine and a similar one for tangent. And tangent, we know tangent repeats itself every pi. So this is going to be important to remember. We'll refer back to it as well. So here would be a type of problem, a simple version of a type of problem that we might solve. So cosine of theta uh, equals negative one-half. And we can have these limitations on it. So this is a set theory limitation. This hard bracket means inclusive. So theta can be equal to zero. And it's going to run from 0 to 2 pi, and this is exclusive. So 2 pi is the boundary, but it's not part of the solution. Another way to write this is this. Okay, so if we have this, that means we only have to find values of theta that are in one full rotation, 0 to 2, uh, 2 pi. So cosine of theta is negative 1 half. Well, let's take a peek. Cosine is width. And so that'll mean that since cosine is equal to negative one half, that means it'll go this way, one half, and uh, that's the x value. So it's here. Notice it happens here, but it also happens here. So there's two answers here, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So what we can write is theta is 2 pi over 3, and it's 4 pi over 3. Notice there's two answers for it. Um, here's a thing I want to add. Let's say we didn't have this constraint. We were just asked this, this on its own. Well, if that's the case, then we need to say we can go 2 pi over 3, but we can go like a full rotation more than that too, right? We can, we can get to here, but then we could go like it plus 2 pi. Or we could go it plus 2 pi five times. We end at the same time, we, with the same space. We still have the same cosine value. So if that's the case, the way that I would write this answer is theta is uh, 2 pi over 3 plus however many rotations, full rotations of the period I want to do. It could also equal 4 pi over 3 uh, plus however many of those rotations I want to do. And again, I know I already said it before. I think your book writes it like this. They're the same thing. Think they're just all multiplied together, so they're, they're all the same value. So let's solve this. We want to find the exact values of theta when 0 is less than or equal to theta, which is equal to 2 pi. So we're going to be in one full positive rotation. And we want to solve this. So what we want to do is we want to know what cosine is, uh, what theta is. So let's get cosine all alone. Treat it like it's just a variable, like this is an a or something. right? So if this said 2a minus 3 equals negative 5, you would just isolate that a. So let's isolate that cosine theta. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Let's uh, divide by 2. And in a full rotation, we want to know when cosine is equal to negative 1. Well, I'm, I know that that's, it. Uh, that's out there at pi. 
you can always take a look at the unit circle. Here's where it, here's the only place where it happens, at a negative one. So we would say uh, theta equals pi. In this case, it just gives us one answer. So same type of problem. We're going to solve this for x, where x is an angle in a, in one full rotation from zero to two pi. This is going to start to change on us. So pay it, like don't gloss over that part. Um, same as before, we want to know what x is, so let's get sine x all alone. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And then notice it's 4 times sine x, so let's divide both sides by 4. And sine x equals 1 half. Where does that happen? You might know it, or you might look on your unit circle and say, let's see, sine is height. So it's 1 half here, but it also happens if you look straight across here, the same height, the y value of 1 half, so pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And since we're running from 0 to 2 pi, we don't have to, um, you know, write the plus 2 pi k or find any other values. Cosecant of theta equals negative 2, and notice this is in 0 to 4 pi, so this is all of the angles in two full rotations. Right, like there's 2 pi, go around again, there's 4 pi. So let's think about what cosecant is. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if cosecant is negative 2, think of it as negative 2 over 1. Uh, that means that sine is the reciprocal, reciprocal of that, negative 1 half. So when is sine equal to negative 1 half? Well, let's do it just for a full rotation, and then we can, we can kind of go from there to, to think about it. So sine is height, negative one half happens here, uh, seven pi over six, right? Boop, and 11 pi over six. Now, if we were going from zero to two pi, we'd be set, right? Like we'd be done, but this actually ha is asking us to go like, yeah, you go to 11 pi over six and that gives you one of the answers, but keep going and find if there's, it happens again ever when you get out here to four pi, right? One rotation is two pi, two rotations is four pi. So what that means is um, I'm going to have two more answers because it'll hit those spots again each time I add that period to it. And what's nice about this, think about these in terms of sixths. So 2 pi is, what, 12 pi over 6. So I'm basically adding 12 pi over 6 to both of these. So 7 of them plus 12 of them should give me 19. 11 of them, 11 of them plus 12 of them should give me 23. And there are my answers. I notice with two rotations, I got four answers. Right with one rotation, I got the two answers. So what I'm doing is I'm adding the period to each of my answers until I go any bigger. Like I could add two pi to this again, and that would be a value that if I plug it in for cosecant, it would give me the answer, but it'd be bigger than four pi. And so this limits where my answers are at. So tangent of theta minus pi over two equals one. It's interesting. Uh, oh, and we're doing it for one full rotation. So notice this theta minus pi over two. That's the thing. When I plug that into tangent, I want it to give me a one. So let me think about, not worry about what this is. It's tangent of something gives me one. When does tangent of, tangent of what gives me one? And that's when they would be equal to each other. So it happens here at pi over four. It happens here at negative uh, I'm sorry, at 5 pi over 4, right? Pi more. So I could, I could list them both. I might as well list them both because I'm want i going to need them both. So one of my answers was pi over 4. My other one was 5 pi over 4. And notice what that's equal to. That's equal to the thing that I'm tangenting. I guess that's a word. But it's equal to this whole thing. So it's equal to that. So in order to keep uh, solving this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pi over 2 to both sides. And since there's, there's two answers over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to add, end up adding pi over 2 to both of them. And notice if I add pi over 2, pi over 2, think of that as 2 pi over 4, right? Just make a, just make a common denominator so you can add. So two, pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. So I've got 3 pi over 4 is one of my answers. 5 of them plus 2 of them is 7 of them. And there are my two answers for that tangent problem. 
So uh, tangent of x equals pi over 3. And notice I don't have any bound, right? It's not telling me limited from 0 to 2 pi or something like that. So I got to find every single possibility, which helps me think back to this. If I can get my answer, I just need to add pi over k to it. So a uh, tangent is root 3. So I think that it's, uh, that's the same as root 3 over 1. Let me think about my unit circle. So I want the root 3 in the numerator, right? And tangent is y over x. So if I think of root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, the 1 halves go away, that's root 3. So it happens here at pi over 3. And it also happens where that line is extended, like right across here at 4 pi over 3. But that's just pi over 3 plus pi. So I can just write, uh, I can just say pi over 3 but then plus add pi as many times as I want. And there's my answer. So notice it's, it's pi over 3 plus 1 pi gets me here, plus 2 pi gets me back to here, plus 3 pi gets me over to here, right? It just click, 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 goes back and forth and forth. So with tangent, I really don't have to worry about uh, one answer and this way. If I wanted to use them both, I could. Like another way to write this, it's not as compact, is... Uh, you could say pi over 3 plus a full rotation. And then the other one is 4 pi over 3 plus a full rotation. Like you could write it that way. That's, that's the same thing. That's okay to do it that way. So here's my equation. 2 times cosine squared minus 1 equals 0. And I wanna, I'm going to do two different kind of things with here. One of them is I'm going to write what all the answers are. I'm also going to write what the answer would be if I just did a full rotation. So in, your, in a question, you would only be asked one of these two. I just want to show them both for this problem. So first thing, I want to know what theta is. So this, I'm going to get cosine squared isolated, right? So it's 2 times something minus 1 equals 0. So let's solve for that, and then we'll, we'll worry about where to go from there. So add 1 to both sides. Divide by 2. Now cosine squared, that means that... As you know, that means the same as cosine squared. So that square is furthest out. So I'm going to square root both sides here. And when I square root this side, it just becomes cosine of theta. And when I bring that cosine, uh, that square root over here, it's plus or minus. Plus or minus comes in when you, when you pull in a square root of 1 half. Let's see, that square root of 1 over square root of 2 which is 1 over square root of 2, rationalize that denominator, root 2 over 2. So cosine is plus or minus root 2 over 2. So I want to find all the widths that are root 2 over 2 in any direction. So root 2 over 2 happens here at pi over 4. It's negative here at 3 pi over 4. Notice how it just kind of makes this nice little rectangle, right? Then it happens here, boop, at 5 pi over 4. And then it happens here at 7 pi over 4. So if I was answering this question for just this part, I could just list them. So I would say theta equals all of, all of those. Maybe each of those? Now if I was writing all the solutions, I would have to write each of them individually with the plus uh, 2 pi k. Because it's this and all four rotations from there, this and all four rotations from there, and so on. Well, let's give this one a go. We've got tangent in two different places. So we're going to have to figure out maybe how to combine them so we can deal with this. So this is, I'm going to just do the arithmetic. Notice it's 2 times that, so I'm going to distribute that 2 into there. Um, now I've got tangent on both sides. So how about I subtract tangent from both sides? And 2 of them minus 1 of them is 1 of them. And I've got the 6 and the 5. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides as well. So notice what I did. I did some manipulation to it. And now I have, well, tangent's equal to negative 1. There's no bound here. So I'm going to write everything in terms of uh, plus, uh, plus pi times k. When is tangent negative 1? here and here, right? Because they're the same value, but they're opposite. 
signs. So I think that what I'll do is I'll grab that 3 pi over 4, and I'll say I can just keep adding as many pi's to that as I want, and that'll give me all of the solutions uh, that would work back in this original equation. And you know what's, what's nice about these? You can always check on your calculator, right? You can always, like, take that value, plug it back into the calculator, um, 3 pi over 4, make sure the left side equals the right side, and you're good. Sine of theta equals 0 0.8. 0 0.8, that's like 4 fifths. And I don't have a 4 fifths on, on my unit circle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator and do some approximations. So let me uh, think about this. And, and always in, in these type of problems, assume you're in radians. If it doesn't tell you that specifically you're in degrees, assume that you're in radians. So let me think about this. Sine of theta is 0.8. I'm going to do a little sketch to help me think about this. Sine is height. So I have some angle that gives me a height of 0.8. So I notice it happens here in the first quadrant, but notice that like there's another one over here that gives me an answer in the second quadrant. Now here's where I'm going to use inverse sine. If sine of theta gives me 0.8, one of my answers well, I can get by going arc sine or inverse sine, 0.8. So let me grab my calculator, make sure I'm in radians. I am in radians. And I'm going to go arc sine of 0.8. So inverse sine, 0.8. It won't give me the answers in terms of pi. It's going to give me a decimal. So about 0.928. So it's about 0.928 radians. Now notice that's just this angle. Now getting that other angle, getting the other angle before, what I was doing was I was just looking at unit circle and saying, oh, it's about here, so the other one's here, right? But on this, I'm going to have to do a little more thinking. And it's kind of, it's kind of clever. There's some symmetry to sign. There's some um, geometry to it. Like this angle here, and this angle here are the same, right? Because they have the same height. So that means out here is pi. So if I go pi minus that uh, 0.928, it'll give me that angle, or at least a good approximation for that angle because I had to round. So my other one is pi minus 0.928. So that's interesting. For sine, I can go arc sine and get an answer. And then I go pi, or 180, minus that to get my other answer. And that's because sine is height, because of the geometry of sine. So I'm going to do that pi minus that answer on my calculator. Uh, pi minus, I might as well just use the answer so I don't have to type it in. So my last answer, second than that. And I'll say it's about 2.214. And notice I had those two angles. And I don't have any boundaries on this, so I'm going to say plus as many two pi's as I want, plus as many two pi's as I want. And there are my answers for that one. Let's do another problem kind of like this. Secant of theta is equal to negative 5, and I have no boundaries. So I'm going to write my plus 2 pi k, my answers. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if secant's negative 5, cosine is negative 1 fifth, the reciprocal of it, right? Because that's like negative 5 over 1. So same sort of thinking. Let me, th uh, cosine is width. So negative 0.5 would be this direction for my width. So I want the angles that give me that width. So one of my angles here and my other angles here. Theta, I'm going to use inverse cosine to get there use that calculator. Inverse cosine of negative one-fifth. I'll say 1.772. What was it again? 1.772. Now cosine has a different sort of geometry than sine does, right? Sine's height. So on that sine one, I, I could think about it this way, pi minus that. But on this one, since this is width, this is a certain angle. Right, there's my uh, 1.772 radians. 
But notice this way would also be that, but in a negative direction. So for, for cosine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about it as uh, 2 pi minus that angle that inverse cosine gave me, right? Do you see how that gives me this angle right here? So to get my other one, I'm going to say 2 pi minus that. And I'll, again, I'll just do that on my calculator. I still have the answer, so I don't have to type it back in there. 2 pi minus answer. 4.511. I'm going to remember it. And since these didn't have a bound, again, add as many 2 pi's as you want to get all of the answer. Sine squared plus 3 cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. All right, now this is, I've got these cosines. I can't combine them like I did those tangents before. So what's interesting about this is notice I have something squared plus 3 times something minus 1. Now you don't have to write it this way, but just in your mind, think, what if I let a equals cosine of theta? Notice how I could rewrite this. It would be a squared plus 3a minus 1 equals 0. Well, I know how to solve that for a, right? Because I could factor it. And once I've done that, I can plug cosine back in. So in other words, I recognize this as a quadratic. Something squared plus something uh, not squared <laughs> and on its way. And um, if I try to factor this, I'm not going to be able to factor it. But I could run it through the quadratic formula, right? Remember that is this. And I could plug it in, I could get my answers, and I know that after I do that, a is equal to um, 1.26 of 5.02. So since a is equal to those things, cosine must be equal to those things. And now I have two cosine problems to solve. And notice this one, I could inverse cosine. I could inverse cosine, it would give me an answer. Go 2 pi minus that, give me another answer. Same thing here, so I'll end up with four answers for this problem. All right, I've got another quadratic form here. Something squared, and then that's something. So if you want, you know, if it helps you, just let A or whatever variable you choose equal the thing that you want it to placehold. And notice if I do that substitution, I get 2A squared minus 5A plus 3 equals 0. And then I could go to factor that or run it through quadratic formula again. What's nice about this one, this one factors. Let's see, this factors to uh, that. These two things multiplied together equals 0. So that means then that a would equal 3 halves and a would equal 1. And since this is sine, then I'd say, okay, sine of a is 3 halves. I'm going to solve that. That'll give me two answers. Sine of a equals 1. I'll solve that as well, and I have all my answers. Now, if you're not into the substitution like that, you can, like, if it's a little sophisticated, I think, but you could just factor it straight from here. In other words, this factors to uh, 2 sine theta minus 3 times sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And so you have these two things multiplied together that equal 0. You could say this equals 0 and this equals 0. And then solve them both separately. You'll get the same answers either way. So there are some times when you're going to have to do some factoring to solve these. Let's look at another problem like this. Now you could run this through quadratic formula again. You could do that substitution. One of the things that I notice on this problem is they both have a sign in them. So I'm just going to factor out a sign. Like it's already equal to zero. So if I factor out a sign, I end up with that. And notice this thing times that thing equals zero. It's like a zero product property. So this has to equal zero. Or this thing has to equal zero. Or both. So let's solve these. When is sine zero? Well, sine is height. So it's at zero. It's at 2 pi as well, but we're just including 0 but not including 2 pi. So according to this one, uh, this could be 0. Let's solve this one out. Subtract 1, divide by 2. 
When does that happen? Sine is negative 1 half. Height is negative 1 half. So it happens here at 11 pi over 6, and it happens here at 7 pi over 6. And there's all my solutions because I was just looking for stuff in one full rotation. Man, like I said, we're bringing a lot of stuff together. Um, we're now going to bring in a little more. We're going to dig in some of these, like some indifference formulas, um, half angle, and that sort of thing. Now, when you're solving these, you want like a single cosine statement or a single sine statement, or you want them multiplied together, you know, some of this form. So all our manipulation is going to try and get them into that sort of form. So if I look at this, I've got cosine x times cosine 2x plus sine x times sine 2x. That looks familiar. Cosine times cosine plus sine times sine. Oh, let me think about that. That This is uh, one of my sum difference formulas, right? Cosine times cosine, sine times sine. So I could condense this down to a single cosine statement. In other words, uh, using that uh, difference formula, this is the same as that, that left-hand side. And well, x minus uh, 2x is negative x. And cosine of a negative is just cosine of it. And there, now I can solve it from here just by looking at my unit circle. All right, taking a peek at this one, cosine of 2 theta equals cosine of theta. Okay, I've got to deal with this thing. Um, I've got cosine of theta. I've got cosine of 2 theta. Oh, well, you know what? This looks like, this looks familiar to me as well. This looks like a double angle, right? Cosine of 2 theta, I can rewrite it as any of these. And now since this is a cosine, that one's not going to change. I think I don't want to bring a sine into this, this. I think I just want to keep it as cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cosine squared minus 1, right? That is equal to that. And now I have something that's looking like a quadratic, something squared. So let's subtract cosine from both sides. It's equal to 0. I have something in the quadratic form, right? You can think about that. Uh, let a equals cosine and rewrite this as 2a squared minus a minus 1 equals 0. Factor it, run it through quadratic formula, and you're on your way to solving it. All right, on this one, I've got things in terms of cosine and in terms of sine. And really having it in terms of these two different functions added together doesn't help me. Sine squared. Oh, you know what? This makes me think of Pythagorean identity. Right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, which means uh, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Right? So I'm going to rewrite this then as 1 minus cosine squared. But I distribute that 2 into there. This looks like a quadratic to me again. I'm going to add this to both sides. That 3 cosine sits there. And I can subtract 2 from both sides. And I've got a quadratic again that I could factor or run it through quadratic formula. And again, if you don't see it, let a equals cosine squared. I'm sorry, just cosine. And go back and factor it. And you are on your way. All right, thanks for hanging in there. There's one more type of problem I need to talk about. Cosine of 2x. It might make you think about a double angle. That's not a good way to go on this. Like, this isn't going to make things easy. Well, one of them might. I don't think it's going to make things necessarily easier for us. So let's, let's uh, just go ahead and do this. Let's put it on 0 to 2 pi. So cosine of 2x equals 1 half. So that 2x, remember when we were graphing, what that multiplier does is it, it speeds it up, right? It makes it go twice as fast. So in the amount of time that x runs from 0 to 2 pi, 2x would go from 0 to 4 pi. What we've just done is just like um, make, it, make it go around the circle faster. Make it do it twice, essentially, is what we're doing. So here's how I would go about solving this. First off, cosine of something is 1 half. So let me just look that up. What is cosine 1 half? Cosine's width. So it happens here at pi over 3 and here at 5 pi over 3. And 2x equals that. And now... It's not just there, right? It's any 2 pi k. Those are all my answers. 
Now, what I want you to notice is I need to divide by 2, and everything is going to be divided by 2. Again, just like when we were graphing, notice the period is always like 2 pi divided by that multiplier. So the period of this is actually pi. And if you write this out this way, divide everything by 2. So first off, dividing by 2 is like multiplying by a half. So uh, pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. And then plus 2 pi divided by 2 is pi, pi k. See how the periods changed by that multiplier. And over here, uh, 5 pi over 6 plus pi over k. And that just gives me my answers. Like my first answer is pi over 6. My second answer is 5 pi over 6. And now I want to get out to 2 pi. So I'm just going to keep adding pi to these until I get bigger than 2 pi. And since it's two rotations, there should be four answers. So pi over 6 plus pi. Remember, pi is 6 pi over 6. All right, so I have a common denominator. So 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And there's my four answers that would solve uh, that equation. All right, a lot to practice on this one. Tons of stuff. So um, get that practice in, post any questions you have, or message me with them.